Do you know what the hardest and most expensive part of being a YouTuber is? Chances are, you might get this wrong. A lot of people might think, you know, it's all the lights, equipment, monitors, or maybe it's the PC. Well, no. Unfortunately, it's not. One of the most expensive parts of being a YouTuber is storage. A problem I've been having now for well over a year. My usable storage on this PC has just become an absolute nightmare. And unfortunately, I ran out of space in the PC case for hard drives now. They're all full. So, we're going to fix that today with a new £6,000 storage setup. Let's take a look at it, shall we? But before we get into the video, if you want to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest, then check down below in the description and drop a follow to me on Twitter and Twitch, where I stream three days a week. Also down there is a link to our Discord community where you can hang out with me and other like-minded people. And of course, remember to smash that like button and drop a comment down below, as it really helps to combat YouTube's shitty algorithm and give the channel a nice boost. Also, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more content and for those who want to go above and beyond in helping to support the channel then down below as well is my patreon link and also my merch store primalstore.net and if you use code primalxmas you get 20% off all orders until the end of the month and now back to the video so straight off the bat this is everything right here for my new storage setup and my network improvements. Let's start with the networking because that's more boring. So we'll leave the good stuff till later. So right here we have a 10 gigabit multi-link port. So what this is essentially my router goes into that and then I will have, you know, essentially seven ports with 10 gigabit connection. That's going to be important for the storage setup, not so much the internet, but anything that I want really, really fast access to the storage with, we're going to need that. Then we have this. This is a 24 port gigabit switch. So essentially this is going to handle the internet connection to everything for me. So essentially router into the 10 gig switch and then 10 gig switch into the 24 uh, port gigabit switch. This is what's going to plug into, you know, things like um, the PS5, PS4, uh, the TV, and essentially when I get some more Wi-Fi hubs, they're going to plug into that as well, which is going to improve the Wi-Fi around the house. We have a 10 gig switch for my PC. This is going to allow me to get a 10 gig connection on the PC, which will of course be very, very helpful for the actual storage solution itself. Now, 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 with that out of the way, that's the networking stuff, that's not important. That's just a little bit helpful. The real solution is going to be all of this, okay? So what we have here is the Synology DS18 21 plus okay it is an 8 bay nas unit it supports up to a 10 gig nic and it will also have two nvme drive slots which you can use as a cache system so with that we have the 10 gig nic for it that's going to be very very helpful allowing me to get 10 gig connection to the nas we have two ram sticks the synology only comes with four gigabytes of ram these are 16 gig sticks each ecc unbuffered which means they are error correcting which is going to be very very helpful for storage solutions now if you're only running a simple one person setup to the nas chances are you aren't going to need any extra ram however I'm going to be using this for a lot of editing and there's going to be many people connecting to this NAS unit. We're going to set up a small plex system on it as well, which is going to be going across the whole house. We are going to have multiple dockers running off this. And so all the extra RAM is going to be very, very helpful and beneficial for us. We have two Iron Wolf 525 NVMe SSD drives. These are two terabytes each. And these are simply going to be pure cash. 
This is just going to give us a major improvement in access speeds, transfer speeds, and so on and so forth. That's kind of the easiest way to explain it anyway. At the back, we have a boatload of new cables. Now, these are all from Ugreen. They are uh, Ethernet cables, RJ45 cables. Now, I did go a little bit overboard with these. I ended up getting Cat8 cables. Cat8 is definitely overkill for anything I need right now, okay? I would have been perfectly fine getting the cheaper alternative Cat7 cables. However, with me going for Cat8, that sort of future-proofs me a little bit as well. These are going to last for many, many, many years. And they'll also last for many, many upgrades as well, as they are rated for up to 40 gigabits tr uh, transfer per second. So I don't need to worry about any of the data rates or anything like that. So unfortunately for my setup, my home router is just here. So there's my, there's my network hub right there. So that is what is going to connect into the 10 gig switch, okay? The problem is the 10 gig switch is going to go on this shelf somewhere. And then we have one final thing. This is the thing that definitely is the most expensive out of this entire lot, okay? It is the hard drives. Now, right here, I did mention that the NAS unit is an eight bay unit. I got six drives at the moment, which means I can get two more in the future for an extra set of storage. However, right here, let's just get one out. So we have 18 terabytes Seagate Iron Wolf Pro. We have six of these drives. Now, the setup we're going to be using for this NAS is going to be, essentially at the moment, we're going to have four of these drives as pure storage, and then we're going to have two of them set up for redundancy. So what this is going to give us is going to be 72 terabytes of usable actual storage, and then we're going to have 36 terabytes of redundancy as well. What that means is... Out of these four drives, like these are going to be my storage drives right here. If anything goes wrong with these, I won't lose any data at all, okay? With these two drives as redundancy, that means I can lose two of these drives before I lose any data. And then of course, I can also, you know, when I run out of storage in the future, I can upgrade and get two more drives just to add in for another 36 terabytes or even another 40 terabytes. The good thing about the Synology NAS is you can mix and match your drives. You don't have to match, you know, makes, sizes or anything like that. So if our drives get bigger in the future, which chances are they will, I can just get bigger drives. It's not going to be an issue at all. And then if I still run out of space, with the Synology, I can also get two extra attachments as well, which will then allow me to add more storage as well. There are two expansion units for the Synology, which will allow me to add up to 10 extra drives, which means using these hard drives that I have right here, that would effectively give me an extra 180 terabytes of space. Now you might think that's a lot. Unfortunately, it's not. When you're recording in high bitrate for, you know, high quality and things like that, and for the length of time that I am recording for, unfortunately, file sizes are massive, okay? Absolutely massive. Now, just in terms of actual workflow, if I don't delete anything, let's say I just keep everything I record for the next six months, this 76 terabytes will be gone. Okay, I can I can very easily go through all of this storage in the next six months. That is unfortunately one of the problems with being a YouTuber. But with that said, let's get to the fun part of setting it all up, shall we? So this right here is the NAS unit. This is the base of everything. What we have right here at the front are the eight bays. Now, they do have a small little key system as well, so I can lock them in. However, installing the drives is quite simply, you just press the bottom of the tray, and the tray lifts out. 
for normal three and a half inch drives, it is just toolless, like the sides here just pop off and then these are what hold the drives in. For SSDs, it does come with a small bag of screws as well and then you just screw the SSDs into the actual base here. And then, again, it's super simple. You just push it in, push down, and you are good to go. Now again, there are eight bays on this unit. You can buy expansion units as well to get an extra up to 10 bays. We have power button on the front, status and alert lights, including the LAN connection lights as well. And then it does also have a USB here on the front as well right there. If we take a look at the bottom of it, so right here, this is where the RAM is. We'll be opening that up momentarily so we can get in there and we can change the RAM with our two new sticks. And then on the back, this is where all the connection stuff is, including the fans. Now, right here, I believe these are 120 mil fans. There is two of them. We have three more USB ports, four RJ45 ports, and a east side of cable and another east side of cable power right here kensington lock which i mean to be fair what home user is ever really going to use a kensington and then right here we have a small expansion port which we're going to use for our 10 gig network card now in order to actually install the nvme drives however we are going to have to take all the bays out so again that's a super simple just press them all down take all the cages out we'll just throw these to one side for now we will need them momentarily, but not right this instant. So right, we're gonna get absolutely everything installed first. The NVMe installation is actually toolless as well. So as you can see right there, we have two NVMe slots. It is just a little lever right here that you just simply push up and then you slot it in. There's no screw, no faffing about or anything like that. Super, super simple and easy M.2 installation. So, let's get this all installed, shall we? Alright, there's one in already, very nicely. So, let's do the second. Okay, and second one is installed. So, just like that, we have our two NVMe drives installed. And now, what we're going to do is we are going to install the RAM sticks. Alright. RAM slot pops off. Now, there is already one slot in there. This is only a four gig stick though, which we don't really care about. So we need to go ahead and take that out. So simply pop the latches at the side and the RAM stick will just pop up. So right here, we do have Synology's DDR4, 2600 mega transfers per second, 16 gig CL19, error correcting memory we've got two sticks of this now you can use third party ram in the synology units that is allowed however synology will unfortunately not support the uh, the warranty on it so if anything goes wrong while you're using third party Synology will not cover it. So what I would suggest is if you are going to get a NAS unit, if you're going to use third party RAM, just don't tell Synology that you're using that. It's like, if you do have any problems, then, you know, just make sure you stick the official Synology RAM in that actually comes with the unit. And last stick in. So it would help if I have it the right way round. Let's move that out of the way as well. Just slot it straight in. Once it's in there, you just press it down and it clicks into place just like that. All right, so we now have four terabytes of NVMe cache. We have 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. So let's go ahead, get the 10 gig card installed, and then we can start loading up all of our beautiful, beautiful hard drives. So in order to install the 10 gigabit card here, we actually have to unfortunately take the shroud off. And to do this, there are six screws we need to do. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, once we take all these screws out, the shroud will come away naturally. So let's go ahead and get that done. And just be careful you don't drop any of the screws into the fan grill. Otherwise, you might be in a uh, spot of trouble there. Now that we've got that unscrewed, all we simply have to do is lift it up, basically. And as you can see, it just sort of pops off like that. So now 
little finagling and it should just come away. There are going to be two clips as well at the bottom, so you might struggle with this a little bit, but eventually it will just lift up. Lay it on its uh, actual feet and then just slide the cover off. There we go. Right, so now we have access to where we are installing the actual card. Now, the installation process for this, super, super simple. If I move this over a little so you guys can see, the card goes in here into the PCIe lane. However, in order to do that, we do have to take one more screw out first. No, you can't really see, I'm sorry about that, but it's located here just on the small bracket. So we're gonna take that one out and then the bracket will just lift up and we can remove that. Then this screw we're going to put separately to the actual shroud screws just so we don't lose any. So then that cap slides up and then the actual cover just pops out. There we go. Right, now let's get the card in. This is the Synology 10 gig NIC. It's only a single port because that is all I need. It comes with a low form bracket. However, there is a long form bracket inside the box as well if you want to change that over. And in order to do that, there are simply two screws, one here at the top, one here at the bottom. Simply unscrew it, the bracket comes off, and then you can screw the bigger one on as well. That's so if you want to use it in a PC, you can do. However, for me, I have an ASUS card for the PC, so we're just gonna keep the small bracket on. Now, all we're gonna do is we're simply gonna line this up a little bit. Once you're in, you just push it all the way down and it locks into place like that. Now, what we're going to do is the black plastic cap on top, we're going to slide that down and then the screw that we take out is going to go back in there. Let's go ahead and get that screwed in and this is going to completely secure the card in place and just ensure that it doesn't move. So we want that nice and tight, basically. Right, now that the card is back in, it is now time to go ahead and put the shroud back on. Now, when it comes to putting the shroud on, you have a small little bit there on the side, like a small metallic strip, and then you have a Synology logo vent. Now, the vented side has to go back over the 10 gig neck area, and then to put it back on, make sure you line it up properly with where your screws are at the back. You simply slot it down. And then once you're in position, you simply just push it forward. Now with the shroud back on, which does take a bit of an angling, I will say, it's now time to start slotting in the weight, all of the hard drives. Now, as I mentioned, these bays are toolless. You really don't need to do anything if you're using normal three and a half inch drives. On the side of each of the bays, there's going to be a little tab that says pull on it. So simply grab that and pull. And there we go, the side comes off. You want to keep hold of that. That's going to be what we screw in the hard drives with. So again, do the same on the other side. Then what you wanna do is take a look at your hard drive first and you see where your connectors are. Just sort of line them up and imagine if they were in the bay to go into the actual connector. So here we need to have the actual Leica Seagate uh, logo on the top of the bay. And then on the side, just make sure your holes line up properly. So just like that, and then just push it in to actually get it square. So once your hard drive is seated normally, take your little plastic caps that we had previously, put them in the side and these little knobs here need to go into the rubber circles as these are going to go through and hold the hard drive in place. And then you just push basically. Like you will hear a small clip and there we go, that one's in. So now we just need to do the same again on the other side here. There we go. All right, so that hard drive is now completely in the actual drive bay. So all we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're just going to slide it in, and then we're just going to lock it. And that firmly pushes the hard drive into the actual socket as well. And now that we've done that, we just need to do it another five times.
last drive going in. And now with that, all six drives are loaded. There are still two bays empty. However, I do not have two more hard drives to go in there. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the actual drive cages back in there, just like so. And then one final order of business is when you get your Synology unit, you will get two small black plastic keys. This is simply to actually lock your bays in place, which we are going to. So again, remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we're just going to lock them all in right now. And now with these three locked, they will not press in at all, which means there is no way to remove the drive. Now I'm only going to lock the drives with the actual uh, hard drives in them. These two, I'm still going to leave unlocked because there's no drives in there. Right, with that out of the way, we can go ahead and move this now. Now, one thing to keep in mind is it is going to be heavy, okay? It's going to be very, very heavy. So, what I would suggest doing is run your power first and run your networking first if it's going to be in a hard to reach area, okay? Without further ado though, let's move it, shall we? Right, now we need to start looking at network runs. Now, that is where all of these cables and boxes are going to come into play. I'm not going to bother with the PC 10 gig card just yet. I'm going to do that off camera because in order to do that, I need to pull the whole PC out and chances are I'm gonna have to take the graphics card out as well because I do have a 3090 and unfortunately the support bracket for that gets in the way of the bottom PCIe slot which I need. So I'm probably gonna have to take all that out, install the 10 gig NIC and then put the graphics card back in which is gonna be annoying to be honest. All right, so without further ado, the NAS unit is now placed on the shelf. I've moved all the camera stuff to the top shelf and now I'm going to like completely reorganize the shelving unit anyway, especially because part of it is kind of being used as a nightstand, but that's just what happens when you have to run everything from a bedroom, basically. And that's also the reason why I went with a NAS instead of actually making my own storage server. Making a storage server would have been cheaper and far easier. Unfortunately, I do not have the space and I am not having a very, very noisy server sitting in my bedroom. So NAS, more expensive, but more quality of life for me when trying to sleep anyway. So let's get the final cables done, shall we? And for these, I'm going to run them up behind the shelf, over the ceiling and down to my actual hub for now. Later on, I will probably actually, you know, put them behind the walls and through the ceiling and I'll actually have like dedicated switches behind them. But for now, I mean, it's a rush job. So let's just get it done, shall we? Here is our switch. There you go. Power on the back, another Kensington lock. And then on the front, we just have eight 10 gig switches, basically. And then you've also got your LEDs and things like that as well. So let's go get it in, shall we? So here is the 24 port switch. Now, once again, on the back we have vents. So many, like quite a, lot, uh, quite a lot of vents. We have power. And then on the front, we just have 24 gigabit switches. Well, RJ45 ports. And this is going to be what covers the internet for most of the house. Now, neither of these are wireless. These will plug into a wireless like access point, which I will be installing around the house. And that is going to be the main thing for this. Like that's gonna provide Wi-Fi around the whole house and then also anything that doesn't need 10 gig connection. So let's go ahead and get this off here as well. Now from the 10 gig switch, I'm going to have to use one of these. This is a 10 meter cable, which yes, there to there, not 10 meters. So even though it's a little annoying, it's only a temporary process. Hey, look at that, nice big fat boy. We really, really do not need this much cable, but beggars can't be choosers right now. So let's go ahead and get this plugged in as well, shall we?
Right. It's not the best, and yes, I know using sellotape is a terrible idea for this. I do have some uh, some wire racks actually coming that I'm going to put on the ceiling, but for now, it's a temporary measure, and that's all that matters. So we are basically done now, other than plugging the network switches in, uh, plugging the NAS in, and I've just got to install the 10 gig NIC into the PC. So I'm going to go ahead and get all that done, and then we're going to jump to actually setting the NAS up. Okay, so it's been a few days now since we were initially setting the NAS up and quite a lot has happened in that time. First of all, I had to send back the TP-Link 10 gigabyte switch. It was far too loud. I don't know if there's a problem with the fans in it or something like that. It was rated for low noise, but it was anything but quiet. Maybe it could be low noise in, in a data center environment, but certainly not for an office or even worse, a bedroom environment so that had to go back it was replaced with a QNAP switch um, it was only you know two 10 gig ports on this QNAP one but it does have four inputs at two and a half gig as well luckily enough that's all I need just a 10 gig to the NAS and a 10 gig to the PC and then everything else can just run off the two and a half gig which perfectly fine for me and the best thing is all it's fanless so I don't need to worry about any fan noise it does get a little bit warm but you know, it, it's manageable, thankfully. And then anything else that I need to connect to, I can just use the one gig switch. Now, the NAS is completely up and running. The RAID array is built, and we're gonna take a look at the performance of it, along with some of the things that I am going to use this NAS for. So let's just go ahead and change screens, and we can take a look at it. So, right here, you can see that uh, my array is built, and there's my NVMe cache right there. So, obviously, we did use 18 terabyte drives. The way hard drives operate, you're never gonna get the full advertised amount. It's just the way hard drives work um, but right now each of the drives has given me 16.4 terabytes usable space two of these drives are redundancy because i am running raid 6 so that means i can basically lose one of these drives and i lose no data i just replace the drive and rebuild the array i get my data back basically um, i can stand up to two drives uh, failure with this raid array and i will be fine so any problems i can just replace a drive where the total is 65.4 terabytes usable space so that is what i have available to use which you know probably won't last all that long thankfully i do still have two more bays that i can stick two more drives in which will help as well so Let's start talking about what we use this NAS for. Other than obviously, you know, raw storage capacity for videos and things like that, as well as recording to and editing from, which you'll see why we're going to do that once we actually get to the performance side of things coming up. But other than that, I use it for a few other things as well. So on the NAS, I am currently running uh, Dockers, just for a few other things and a big big thank you to strike from the community who actually helped me get all of this set up would not have been able to do it without you strike so first of all we have sonar and radar now this is basically just a way to you know record live tv and films uh, we have prowler which is an indexing service we have plex which is so you know i can basically watch videos from my NAS on my TV, um, on my phone, if you get Plex, Pla uh, Plex Pass Plus, which thankfully has a lifetime option. Um, other than that, I can also allow other people to connect to the NAS as well, to allow them to watch things on it. So for example, um, I'm connected to it on my phone, on my TV, and my girlfriend is connected on it with her TV as well. So, you know, like we can either watch things together at there, or we can do essentially a watch party where I can watch here, she can watch there, and we can just watch together, basically. So Plex is honestly an amazing service. I love it. And then we have um, NZB Get and Deluge. These are basically just download providers, pretty much. But enough about that. Let us start talking performance, shall we? So if I bring this back over here, this is Blackmagic Design's disk speed test. So if you've never heard of Blackmagic, they are essentially really, really big in networking, video production, and just general things like that. Let me first explain why I'm using this instead of something like Crystal Mark. So I am using this because the main purpose 
for me is going to be video recording and editing to and from. So for me, this is just a really nice eye catchy way of seeing, okay, this codec, I can read it fast enough. I can write it fast enough. I can record this format to the device. So that's why I prefer this over Crystal Mark. That is, that is just my preference. Use whichever software you prefer. So obviously in the NAS, we do have um, six 18 terabyte Seagate Ironwolf Pro drives along with two NVMe caches. Let's go ahead and do a few tests first and foremost to show you guys the difference between different levels of hardware. So if we start with a normal, uh, a normal hard drive, this is just a bog standard WD Black. It is a six terabyte drive and it is 7200 RPM. Uh, I think it's 256 megabytes of cache as well. Not 100% sure on that one, but let's go ahead and just start the test for that. So as I say, this right here is just a bog standard hard drive. You're not going to get the world's best performance out of bog standard hard drives. Unfortunately, they are really, really slow. The main benefit of a normal hard drive is pure pure capacity when it comes to performance they are not amazing as you can see right here see a normal a normal hard drive i wouldn't be able to really record in 1440 or 4k or anything like that i uh, definitely can't do 8k so normal hard drive it works for 1080 but that's kind of about it and as you can see the read and write speeds are typically around 150 so even backing things up on this drive will be slow and that's also one of the reasons I got the NAS. So let's go ahead and stop that test. We've already seen the performance there. Let us take a look at a normal SSD, shall we? So a normal SSD is actually what I've been using to record to for the better part of a few years now. This is my, this is my main drive, okay? Everything I've recorded to and edited from is this drive it's also what i keep all my games on and if we start the test it is just a normal um 860 evo sata ssd from samsung but obviously being an ssd the performance on the read and write are much much faster than a traditional hard drive but again still only around the 400 to 500 range now much better than the hard drive and you might think that if the normal hard drive is only giving around 150 megabytes read write would the nas not be the same no for a few reasons and we're going to touch on them momentarily so now that we've seen a normal ssd let's take a look at an nvme drive okay now this nvme is the samsung 970 evo it is pcie gen 4 it's either Gen 3 or Gen 4. I can't remember which one it is. It might be Gen 3, actually. But if we just go ahead and do a very quick speed test right here. As you can see, an NVMe drive is much, much faster and far more superior. Obviously, with it being the 970, it is not Samsung's, you know, top of the range. That is the 980, which I actually have my OS running from right now, which means I'm sorry, I cannot test that. Uh, you just can't really test your actual uh, operating system unfortunately um, but as you can see nvmes they're going to be very very quick it does depend a lot what drive you have what gen it is and so on and so forth but if i was to record to this nvme i would be able to record in basically any format now remember we have six normal hard drives in the nas and then also two nvme drives used as a cache now that cache system is going to allow us to read and write faster to the nas unit so let's go ahead and set that up really quick uh, we are going to be using my 10 gigabit connection rather than the one gig um i could show you the one gig but trust me when i say performance is very lacking uh, the one gig connection it only averages around 100 megabytes uh, that's simply due to the way the connections work basically we're never going to get like any faster than that so let's just test the 10 gig connection and start so as you can see right now my writes and reads writes a little on the slow side um but that will go up as the test runs read we're getting over a gig now one of the things that could affect this as well is obviously plex is active and running um all my dockers are active and running so that is kind of using the nas resources a little bit um, I know when I very first set it up and it was just a blank NAS with nothing on it, I was getting about a gig either way. But 
with you know perfectly fine write speeds perfectly fine read speeds this is gonna last me now for a very very long time and as you can see it's even faster than my actual ssd that i've been recording to and editing from for years so this alone is going to be a huge step up in terms of you know workflow for me personally and then there's also the major size difference however with it being normal hard drives as well the more full they eventually get unfortunately the slower my performance will eventually become but that's going to be you know future primals problem it's not my current problem but yeah that's going to be uh that's going to be great. That's going to be absolutely great. I am actually really, really excited for this NAS. It's going to save me so much time and effort in the future. And hopefully it will be money well spent. We'll just have to we'll just have to see how things pan out. But yeah, guys, that is my new six thousand pound storage solution still i hope you guys have enjoyed this video i hope you found it informative and hopefully uh maybe we'll do maybe we'll do something else coming up maybe maybe something with the pc i do kind of want to water cool it in the future so yeah there's there's an idea but yeah if you guys enjoyed the video hit the like button leave a comment down below letting me know do you want to watch me water cool my pc and of course hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel as always so everybody thanks for watching and i'll see you soon